All right, now we're gonna talk about the minor six chord. So the minor six chord could be like something used in conjunction with the minor going up into the minor seven there. Here's an ex example of Soul Power by James Brown. So this little riff here has the top of a D minor chord. But when I come in here to the B note, that's the sixth note of the scale. And then this C note is the flat seventh note of the scale. So this could be a six chord right here. And this is a cool chord, we're gonna get into this later, that's called a raised nine chord. Here's another example, say you could have a progression like this, here would be a minor six also. So this is like five, three, four, three. That's a, a C seven, nine. But dig the sound of that minor six here. It's different than a minor seven. You hear that sixth note, that B note. So it has an interesting sound of its own. Here's an example from a Pink Floyd song. See so how that's striking that can be? That, so that'd be like an open two, two, one, two. So it's an A minor with a two on the bottom string. called Your Possible Pass. That's about 51 seconds into that song from Pink Floyd's The Final Cut. So that's a very strong usage of it there. A lot of times it'll be in a funk thing like. So in this case, I'm just kind of playing this minor seven, 10, eight, 11, down to 10, eight, 10. So if the bass line is still staying in C and not doing like a chord change here when you change those things, you can always add that to kind of go, or, you know, kind of comp around with that minor seven. But if the bass start, a lot of times the bass will change and that can also become this dominant seven chord underneath here, like a four chord. So that'd be the case of like, oye como va. So here's your A minor seven. And it could be like that as well. But when the bass note changes, then this is a dominant seven chord, so it's a little different. But if you're just playing it on the bass, then it's in the context of a minor six right there. So it, you know, you can kind of add that to riffs here and there and stuff. Dominant seven, okay, blues chords. Let's look at all of our dominant seven open chords. Let's say A7 instead of 222, it's 202. So A string and then 202 open. D7 is open on the D and then 212. C7 is like a C, but you put the pinky in on the third fret of the third string. That's a C7. And that shape it gets used a lot when you can make it movable. You make sure the outside strings are muted. You're playing those four strings in there that gets used a whole lot. Just like this A7 one becomes a movable shape. D7 as well. Let's look at um, E7 would be like the E chord, but pull that middle two out and you got open two, open one, open, open. So E7 becomes this movable shape here. So every open chord becomes a movable chord up the neck, and that has, that's how you get all the sharps and flats and all the different weird ones and play in different positions and stuff. Okay, so we got, uh, also there's B7. Two on the fifth string, the B note. Two, one, two, open, two. And that's the one that kind of turns into this next one too. So a lot of blues things be like. So 
it's going from the one note of the scale to the four note. That's what, and then the fifth one eventually will hit. That's going to be a one, four, five. That's what it means when they say that. That's the notes of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of a major scale. So this is the one, two, three, four, and five. So when, you, so when your bass note is on those strings, here's the five, to the four, to the one. And you could do that with all the notes of the scale. Say if this was the one, B minor would be the two, C sharp minor would be the three, and those are minor threes. D is the major four, E is the major five, stuff like that. F sharp would be the minor sixth, and G sharp minor seven flat five would be the seventh chord. Okay, so once again we got. Now this is one way to do it where we have five on the A string, five, seven, five, seven, five. But the other way that people do a lot that's kind of comfortable and easy to do, has a nice ring to it, is would be this five, four, five, three on the other side of that fifth fret. Now I'll go up to the five, which is E. Here's the D. A lot of times you'll have it turn around at the end. Now say what if your chord started over here? Say if G was the scale you're in. You can flip it around like that. You have the lower chord here, but G, the fourth of G is C, so that would be that one. So G, G7 to C7. Go up to the five chord. Take a look at this G7 down here. Now, there's another version here. 3, 2, 3, 4. There's another cool one, too. So there's lots of cool ways to play these seven chords. And they have that twang of a major note mixing with a, it's like a major scale mixing with a minor note inside of it. So that minor note and major note, that's that twang. So you got a major, but then you put the, the flat seven in it. So have that major note, but you got that minor note right next to it. There's another way to play it. Put your pinky on the, like the eighth fret in this case, the second string. And here's some other ones down here. We got like um, this E7 can also be like a two, one, three, starting on the D string. You kind of mute the A and, or you can even have, have a whole E major. And just add that three to it on the second string. That's dominant seven, two. You could have open two, open one, three, open. And A7, you can have this O2, O2, O, but you can also put a three down there at the bottom. Or you can make all the twos from an A and add that three to the bottom. Let's look at one more example here from uh, Joe Walsh from James Gang. So he's not doing this full chord, but he has his A in the bass and he's hammering. This is a big dominant seven effect when you hammer from the minor third into the major third. Because it's like you're starting as this minor sounding chord and you're making it happy real quick. So he is creating the effect, juicing the sound, if it were, of that A7 chord by doing that riff right there. And that shows you how you can get a twang into a rock song and it still sounds real cool, but it is bluesy. It's got, got that kind of bluesy twang to it. But obviously there's a lot of blues in rock and roll. Let's move it on and give you another example. Here's Mary Had a Little Lamb by Stevie Ray Vaughan. We're gonna use some more seven chords here. So 
there's an example of the two, one, and three starting on the D string there. And you want to mute the other strings over that bass note. See how you go back and forth using the bass there? And then the A7 was that one with the twos and the three. Seven two one two oh two. There's a power chord A. Sometimes you don't even hit the whole A seven. You know, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So don't forget your power chords. But those are kind of you know with major and minor and the power chord. Kind of see those all the time. So this is kind of about those extra ones. How about a six chord? Now if we think about like a Johnny B Good. that kind of a chugging kind of a honky tonk riff so that's called a six chord so you have a power chord here this is in b flat so it's on the sixth fret and the big strings you're going to go to this tenth fret with your pinky that becomes a six chord it's only the one and the six so you're going from a five chord to a six chord this is the four chord right underneath the one chord five chord So that's your sixth chord. That's kind of a honky tonk, boogie woogie kind of sixth chord. So. so it's a stretch, and you want to get that right in the sweet spot, that pinky. And a lot of things they'll go down to the four chord there, but this one doesn't. One more riff from that song. So let's look at Walk This Way by Aerosmith. It also has a... It even has some extra stuff to it. So we got the... So this goes from the, to the 6 to the flat 7 up here too. And then it kind of goes to the one down here with the power chord there. And comes back on the way back. And let's look at the little chorus thing. So that's like the, you got like a C7. Now, you know how I said the C7 can have that pinky in there? That's what they use here. So this is like the 9th fret and the 3rd string and the 11th fret and the 2nd string. And that becomes the 8 and the 10. So it's like... That's just a 1-4 right there. That's a C7 to an F7. A lot of times instead of a 7 chord, so you got this C here, C7, you come down to this 9 chord. That's a nice one. It, it takes some getting used to with the ring finger having to bar down those three strings on the bottom. But this is the James Brown kind of funk chord. Think about it like, I feel good. Or a sex machine. That's a 13 when you put that pinky down there. We'll get to that in a second. Let's say like James Brown's Make It Funky. So that is kind of the quintessential funk chord right there. That's a dominant seven, because you got your dominant seven. But the ninth note of the scale is added. That's the E note right there. That'd be the fifth fret of the second string. So if you want to know about some James Brown riffs and James Brown chords, I got a link here to take you over there some more lessons when you're done with this one. Okay, so let's look at the next step of that seven chord. So we have the raise nine. So we have the seven nine, but it's a sharp nine. So instead of this E note, it goes up to F.
Okay, so that's the purple haze chord is what I call it. Dominant seven, raise nine. So this would be like, in this case of the seventh fret, you could use the E, big E with it as well. But if you were over here, say like in the fifth fret, it would start with this fifth fret, five, four, five, six. Okay, so that's a dominant seven, sharp nine. Don't Take Me Alive by Steely Dan, I just did a lesson on. I'll give you a link here. This one starts out with one of these chords too. Etc. So there's lots of different ways to do it. This is a common way, like taking your dominant seven chord. Remember how we talked about that pinky on the second string? Well, if you put it on the first string too, you can get one of those raise nine chords. Another thing with raised nine chords that happens a lot in like a jazz tune would be like, you consider this like the, kind of the five chord. You could give it a raise nine down to a flat nine, down to like your, your one. So say if the G is like one, two, three, four, five, that's the five of C. So on the five chord, we could do a raise nine to a flat nine to like a major seven on the one. And that was another way to do a major seven. Think about, we had this shape down here. But you can kind of tuck this in over here. It looks like a minor shape on the bottom, but if you have that C bass here, that's another way to do a cool major seven. Okay, one more example of a raise nine. Think about Taxman by the Beatles. 